I'm the Simple Car Guy, and in this video, I will show you how to go from this to this. Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. After upgrading the speakers and subwoofers in my BMW Z4, it's now time to modernize the infotainment system even further by installing an aftermarket Apple CarPlay and Android Auto unit with a BMW style controller. My Z4 came with a storage box instead of the screen, so I couldn't do what I did in my BMW 550 and just add an interface to the existing screen. Anyway, let's take this car apart and get this installed. So here's everything that came with my unit. This is a 10 and a half inch screen, I believe. Here you have the BMW style uh, controller. It's not a genuine one, obviously. Uh, you also have your GPS antenna. We have um, our uh, video and audio input and output so we can add additional cameras. This car has no camera, so I might add that in the future, but not today. Um, we also have some kind of interface cables, not exactly sure what these do yet. And then of course we have the main connector that goes to the head unit and then to the back of, of somewhere. Well, it doesn't look like it's going in the back of anything, but we'll have to figure out where this goes exactly and how it connects to the screen. I don't have any kind of uh, screen in my car, so this has to work kind of on its own with the head unit. There were no instructions included with this, so hopefully we can figure this out and get it installed. So first thing is to pop off this panel. It should just come out. I'm using a little pick tool right like this. And now we have two Phillips screws right here under the head unit. And now, honestly, we should be able to just pull this out. There it is. Comes out pretty easy. So we have our connectors here in the back. All right, now do we have access to the connectors? We will need to install the screen. And in order to install the actual screen, we will have to take this and this out, I believe. And obviously, of course, the, uh, the storage box, but uh, to wire the cables through and everything, you also think it will be easier if we just take this out. First, we're gonna uh, take off the grill. Oh, our new speakers are in there, how cool. We got a T20 socket right here. So I'm gonna use that to take out two screws in here. Looks like both of my clips, plastic pieces here are broken. Look at that. And I don't see any screws from here. So we're gonna to have to take this piece out as well. To do so, we're gonna remove two more T20 E-Torx screws over here. They're right up top, so pointing up. Just right there. All right, so with those two screws out, there's three more screws up in here. So we're gonna remove those as well. So there's one right here, also T20. There's another one right next to it. So we're gonna remove that one as well. And we have two more further down. Got it. Ah, yeah, there's another screw over there. We're gonna take this one over here. I hope you can see it all the way in the corner here. This is also a T20. I'll tell you this much, 550 was a lot easier to take apart than this car. <laughs> yeah, now it just comes off easily. There you go. Okay, so we have a few connectors in there. I think I'm gonna leave them alone and I'm not going to unplug them. The whole point of removing this is just so we can get to these two screws up here for the, for the vents. With those removed, this comes out. Once again, we don't have to disconnect anything. We can just leave it kind of on top and just remove these two screws at the top over here, also T20. All right, and at this point, this just removes. All right, so I have the unit here. I'm gonna start plugging stuff in and see what works. Uh, because there are no instructions with this. So this wire clearly goes here in the back of the unit. Next, we have this wire that goes to the controller. So I'm gonna plug that in. I'm just gonna plug everything in so I can test it basically. This goes in here. 
And on the back of this unit, there's another plug that this goes into. Okay, not plugged in. So we're missing one. Let's see what that is, which looks like it's going to be this one. It's USB, video out. So it looks like these are just regular USB cables, probably for plugging in flash drives or something like that. So I'm going to route them to my um, glove box compartment just in case I want to use them. These I will leave off for now. It's pretty easy to get here. So if I want to add a camera, I'll do that in the future. The next two items we have are the GPS antenna and the 4G. This is 4G. So there is a SIM card here in the back. So if you want to plug that in, I might in the future, probably not, but I'll keep, leave this connected just in case it does something. And then we have the GPS antenna as well. Looks like they want you to connect this somewhere outside. I will leave it under the dash. Now that we have everything connected to the display, we're going to connect um, the cable that comes from the car to here and then plug this into the head unit itself. So I'm going to leave all of these connectors uh, attached. So this is what's going to our amplifier and things like that, our antennas, satellite antenna and all that stuff. I'm not touching any of that because we don't need to. Okay, so I'm going to unplug this cable. It just comes out like that. There it is. Right now we're just going to take the female end and plug it into the car. Make sure this is open, the open position. Goes in fairly easily, no force, and then close it down and pushes it in. And now this, the male connector, will go back into the head unit. Okay, so we're going to open up the connector. Make sure it lines up. And plug it in, just like that. Okay. Push the connector closed. That looks perfect. All right, guys, so this is the moment of truth. I moved the head unit so you can kind of see it. I plugged the battery back in. I'm going to turn on the car now. So start. All right, that turns on. Woo! Okay, that's progress already. Oh, guys, all right, so that's on. Uh, now I'm going to turn on the car or the head unit. Let's see if the music comes out. It does. Okay, so it's actual radio, so I can't play it on YouTube. But that works. All right, so the audio is still working. Now we're going to have to make sure that we can play um, audio from the unit to the head unit to the speakers in the car. So I'm just going to give it a quick test and see if that works. All right, guys, so all I had to do was actually just switch to auxiliary and then it starts playing whatever's on this unit. So that's awesome. That's already working. No, nothing else needs to be done in that regard. Um, I thought I was going to have to plug in a wire into the auxiliary port uh, in the center console or something like that. Nope, nothing needs to be done. I think at this point I can actually reassemble and give it a proper test, connect my phone, make sure, uh, you know, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay works and everything else, remove this protective film, and I'm excited. This is actually working. All right, guys, so I thought I'd bring you in closer and show you how this entire mess works. Basically, you have the uh, wiring loom that comes from the car. This would normally plug in into the head unit over there. We get this little extension that you plug it into. And then that extension plugs into your original head unit from which you have a little pigtail that goes to our new display, right? With a bunch of other wires, which we're not using. Like I said, this is for other items, cameras and sensors and things like that. Don't need it, at least not at the moment. There is a fuse box here in the middle that powers the display as well. So that's kind of the only connection you really have to make. The rest is sort of optional. Uh, it is a touch screen, but I have decided to add um, one of these just because I like it. It's a little bit easier. I don't have to reach for the display. You know, in this car, it's kind of far, so you have to stretch in order to reach it. With the remote, it'll work perfectly, so I love that. And the rest of the wires, I'm just going to tidy them up and clean them up. Uh, all of these antennas and stuff, I'll put them over there because there's a ton of space here. And, of course, wiring. The big wire that's going to go from the screen is going to go through there. So here, let me move this out of the way. As you can see, we have the two um, uh, ports, or not the ports, whatever, the vents that the air comes out. So I'm going to put the wire in between. 
and then that's just going to come through here and plug directly into there. So nothing complicated, should be very easy. Lots of space to hide the cables and stuff. Let's get it done. All right, so I'm just gonna unplug the screen from all of this wiring stuff. Now I can put this through the back, the wire through the back. I'll go all the way in the back, make sure I'm not gonna, nothing's gonna hit it once I install the rest of the items. That goes all the way in the back. Oh, actually, yeah, like that. Perfect. Now I'm gonna actually put the screen in, connect it, put the screws in, make sure that stays perfectly in there, and then put the vents in and the rest of the stuff. Okay. Now I still have to route this part. Next, I'm going to install the controller, so I have to remove this part. So I think it starts with just removing um, the gate shifter. Okay, okay, that was easy. All right, so I think I'm not going to actually pull it completely out. I'm gonna kind of work from here and remove this little tray and put the controller in. Looks like a T10 socket that you'll need for this. Removed. And it even fits. Wow. Surprised. <laughs> well, only two of the holes line up, but I think I could make it work. And now we're gonna route the wire for it. Okay, here's the wire. It'll be a little easier if I take this out for now. I'm just gonna go under here, make sure there's nothing in the way, which I don't think there is, and plug it in. So this can go back together. Man, this stuff is stubborn. There it is. Jeez. Oh, that took a lot of effort. Finally, wow. All right, I'm done. Probably gonna remove the M. This is definitely not an M car. I have now configured the device, wirelessly connected my phone to Apple CarPlay and played with it for a little bit. CarPlay works as you would expect and connects automatically. Of course, you can still use it without connecting your phone and still have your music, navigation, and even car data. This unit pulls data from the car computer and can show you speed, revs, mileage, temperature, and other data in various screens. Anyway, this concludes the install video, so subscribe to the channel to see the follow-up video for a quick review of the unit after I use it for a couple of weeks. Also, if you have any questions about the install or the unit itself, leave those down below and I'll be happy to answer them in the same video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.